My dear brothers and sisters, I bring you grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So a happy Thanksgiving uh, to all of you. I uh, hope you had a great weekend with family and friends. Um, before I get to the subject of the sermon, I do want to just pause and say thank you to all of you for making this such an amazing, healthy, vibrant, vital community of faith. Uh, I am now entering my 11th year here, uh, and it is one of the joys and blessings of my life to be among you uh, as part of this family of faith that does so, so much to spread God's love to the world. So thank you uh, for all you do to make it uh, such a healthy place. Uh, this is Christ the King Sunday. It is the last uh, weekend, uh, the last Sunday of the church year. Uh, so the church here begins next weekend with the first Sunday of Advent when we anticipate the birth of a newborn king, a little baby, uh, and then we go through the life, death, resurrection of Jesus. We think and reflect on what it means for us, and we come to the end of the year and we anticipate the end of all time when we believe as Christians that every knee will bow to the one that we call Lord and King already today. Uh, the reading for today, the gospel reading, which Anne read for us, comes from Matthew, the 25th chapter. It's the parable of the sheep and the goats. Uh, this is one of my favorite parables, um, and I love it because it reminds us that uh, gospel love is not an intellectual, or it's not limited to an intellectual exercise. It's not limited to what we believe. Gospel uh, love is really an, a verb. It's a doing rather than a believing, and so we are reminded in this gospel uh, that when we care and tend for the least, the lost, the left behind, when we clothe uh, those who are naked, when we give food to those who are hungry, when we give uh, drink to those who are thirsty, when we welcome the stranger, visit those who are ill, uh, we are doing those things for no less than Jesus himself. And for that reason alone, it's wonderful to read this, this uh, parable. Um, but today, at Christ the King, we read it, I think, for another reason, which is at the beginning of the parable, uh, it has lots of royal imagery. So it uses words like glory and throne. It talks about how all the nations will come uh, before the Son of Man. Uh, it uses the language of king and kingdom. And... Uh, I, I want to talk today about sort of two ways that we can reflect, maybe sort of positively, uh, about what it means uh, as Christ, uh, as our King. But before that, I just do want to acknowledge that in our culture, in our world, uh, in our country, I think we're a little nervous, understandably so, of monarchs or kings and queens, because of course this country was founded uh, very directly as, as a reaction, a negative reaction against uh, monarchy, understanding that when a monarch holds absolute power, really bad things can happen. So you probably all know that when Washington was elected as our first leader, uh, the founders of the country were very explicit that he not be called what? King. A king. And so we chose, in their minds, a more modest title of president. They talked after that a lot about how we should be addressed as your majestic, honorable, or whatever. And they decided on, on Mr. President, someday perhaps Mrs. President. Um, and um, Lincoln, who of course are named uh, or declared Thanksgiving in his Gettysburg Address, famously talks about us living in a country that is of the people, by the people, for the people. So we live in a, a democratic country, a more egalitarian country, a country with checks and balances. And again, therefore, in our very sort of DNA, in the air we breathe here, I think we're a little bit resistant to, to the idea of a king, which again is understandable. We live in a fallen world and uh, it is true that when some, someone gets absolute power, bad things can happen. But again, I want to lift up two things to think about today on this Christ the King Sunday that maybe help us to sort of meditate in a different kind of way on what it means for Christ to be our king. First thing I want you to just meditate on is what if, despite the fact that we live in a fallen world and kings not the idea of king or monarchs, but individual kings can be bad. What if we are made, we were formed, we were shaped, we were created by God to bow down and worship something? And what if, in our daily life, if that something that we're, we're invited or made to bow down and worship is taken away from us? What happens? 
Um, C.S. Lewis, one of my very favorite thinkers, uh, talks very sort of presciently about this in the middle of the 20th century, and I want you to listen to two short sentences he writes about this very topic, that we are made to bow down and worship something, and what happens when that thing is taken away. Here's what he says, where people are forbidden to honor a king, they honor instead millionaires, athletes, or film stars. Even, he goes on, famous crooks or gangsters. That's the first sentence. Second sentence, he says, for spiritual nature, the way we are made, the way we are formed, like bodily nature, will be served. Deny it food, and it will gobble poison. So again, something just to reflect on. If, in fact, we were made to bow down and worship something, then I would invite you to reflect on what is it that you are worshiping with your life every day. This is a very biblical idea, by the way. One of the threads of the Bible is we are invited to bow down and worship one thing, and one thing only, and that is God. And we are prohibited from worshiping idols, which include things like millionaires, athletes, or film stars. And yet I think we can agree that we tend to do that today even more than we probably did uh, in the middle of the 20th century. Can I get an amen to that? Okay. So again, it's just sort of an exercise in self-awareness. If we're made to worship something, the question is, what is it that we are worshiping? Okay. Second thing is from the parable itself. I mentioned this is one of my favorite parables um, for the reason I already mentioned. I don't know if I've ever paid a lot of attention to one of the verses towards the beginning of this parable, though, that I want to lift up to you now. And um, again, when we think of kings or monarchs, um, I think we tend, understandably, to focus on the king, on the person on the throne. And I want to sort of lift up a different note, again, coming directly from this parable. So the parable begins, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then verse 34, then the king will say to those at his right hand, and this is the the phrase I want you to think about, come you that are blessed by my Father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning or from the foundation of the world. Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And the note I want to just lift up there is that, again, I think when we hear the word king, we think of the person on the throne and potential abuses. What this is helping to remind us of is a king only is a king if he has a what? A kingdom. With who? Subjects. And in the case of a loving, compassionate, kind God, those subjects are invited to be part of a loving, compassionate, beautiful kingdom. And the amazing thing today as we celebrate the fact that Christ is our king, as it says in this very verse I just read, is that we are invited to be part of his kingdom from the beginning of all time and into all eternity. And I don't know about you, but for me, that sounds like a high and holy calling, and it seems like another reason this weekend to give thanks. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Good and gracious God, we give you thanks today for being our king. Today we pray that you will help us to acknowledge your kingship in our lives and also remind us of the important part we play in living out your kingdom so that those in the world today who are hurting may be fed and clothed and nourished. In all this we pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen.